I said, he was trying to get death row East Coast. Paid about almost $700,000 to just not be able to do it. Then he tried uh, 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 death row Dirty South in Atlanta. Wasn't happening. It was blocking every move he made, right? And I said, sure, check this out, man. I said, give me $100,000 in nine months. I'll make you $20 million. What? Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. You know what I'm saying? So, the, what made, how, because you, I, I know you always look at the way, because at this time, when you're talking about Suge Knight had all of the power in, in his hand when it came to the monetarily thing, mm -hmm. what caused him to, 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 he lost everything. Hundred million, hundred million dollars. Hundred forty-seven million. Hundred and I say I didn't know that specific. Hundred forty-seven million dollars just go from here. David to, Kenner, his attorney, told me that. What What brought him down so fast and so abruptly? Like, the same thing you were talking about earlier. How money changes you. It was a time money changed you and got you out of the hood, and you was better than them. Now money brings you back to the hood. And now you want to be so real. Suge is not a really a gangster like that. He didn't grow up like doing these things. But he got to the element with money. He's buying dudes that he just admired from a long time ago. And put himself in a position where he wasn't conforming with white America. And if you ain't with me, you're against me. Because most powerful thing on the West Coast, Death Row Records, and you have no edifice of that in Compton at all. Not a house, not a building, a couple of jackets, you know, that from back in the day, you don't even see the Death Row chains no more, you know, but that can't, see, the tragedy in black lives we don't have mentors, black solid mentors, that we that you don't respect us. I, I remember one time we were doing set it off, and a brother in the nation named Brother Remus, we sitting there doing security, and we sitting talking. And I in, in my other life, I, I was marvelous, Mahar, and I had a condo in Hawaii, right, and by the blowhole. And we, he said, is that right, Marvel, on uh, uh, Highway 58? I said, what do you know about that, Remus? He said, I went to Chaminade University. I said, you went to Chaminade? I said, what the? He said, I took international business. Wow. He said, man, I stayed in China for three years. I know how to speak Cantonese. I know how to do this. I know how to I'm like, bruh. And this thing popped up in my mind, right? So me and Shahi, we up at death row one day, and I tell Suge, I said, he was trying to get death row East Coast. Paid about almost $700,000 to just not be able to do it. Then he tried uh, 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 death row Dirty South in Atlanta. Wasn't happening, it was blocking every move he made, right? And I said, sure, check this out, man. I said, give me $100,000 in nine months, I'll make you 20 million. What? I said, man. Rock music is just like dope. I can do, we can do a death row international. I can go to Japan, get a P.O. box. And the same way you slang music with DJs here, you can do it in Japan. And I got a man that speaks Japanese, Chinese, and Cantonese. He couldn't see the vision at that time. Nine months, 1996. All of that could have been on a whole nother level with an international death row. You dig what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But he didn't see the vision. A lot of times we don't see the vision. You feel what I'm saying? Now he's like, damn, I should have done that, huh? Damn. Hindsight is 2020 vision. Yeah. You know? When you see him in court this last time, that's a, about the, uh, they had him like he had, couldn't see. It was a whole bunch of stuff going on with him. He even got older now. Mm -hmm. But still should, like, um, I want, sometimes I wonder, like, will he ever even get out? Is he going to make it out of that? I mean, with his determination, he, you know, he, he, black people's like roaches. We survive a lot of shit. <laughs> when they think we down, we ain't down. And he got action in coming back, but 
I, right now, I think he sees the errors that he did with the people he befriended. So now he's getting a closer circle and he's trying to make some moves and put itself in another perspective, mm. you know? So uh, uh, I see good things coming to him. You know, we all grow. A uh, lady was telling me last night about making mistakes and I, I feel it ain't but one mistake you make in life and that's death. Yeah. Everything that is an experience. And you, if you either grow from the experience or you don't grow for it, you stay stagnant, you know? So it's a lot of things that, you know, man, I should have done it this way. And sitting in a cell and I'm a master of that five by nine sitting in there rehearsing like, damn, life should have went this way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So now in my elder years, I see like, uh, the philosophy of the two bulls and don't run down and walk fuck down. one walk and fuck them all let me ask you this about, I want to go back to Aaliyah just for a minute like Aaliyah was uh, Aaliyah she passed not long after that mm -hmm. like but just that night was that the only time that you ever did detail with Aaliyah was that night when that award was going on uh, you would know uh, we we did other celebrity events with, with Barry and I would be on uh, did some Little baseball stuff. She was a real cool little. Uh, so you you've seen her a few times. Yeah. It wasn't just once. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like what's something that stuck out to you? But I know she was young. And but what what stuck out to you about her was it was she ta was it a talent or? She had Aaliyah had a, has has a personality that's warming. Okay. She she wasn't like um, Missy Elliott. I guess because she was ugly. She had a complex, you know. I, you know I, uh, 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 beauty is in the eye of the beholder. She, let me say this: and I don't want, I, I don't that want. That was a hard Miss Ellie coming for you. I, I, I'm missing. Now you, you, you know it. Hold up. Yeah, yeah. You, you, God damn it, you, you, you talented than a motherfucker, but you, you, you ain't gonna win no beauty contest. I don't give a fuck what you say. How was? How was? How was? Uh, uh, Aaliyah, like, like, just she was, she was really to me. Everybody did. We didn't get to see a lot of her, but we did. Yeah, she did movies. She did music. In the short period of time that she lived, there was a lot. I mean, you see Drake. He loves Aaliyah. Like that's one of his things. He mm -hmm. he loves Aaliyah. Like and it's a, it's a it's a funny story, a Captain Shahid story about Aaliyah and the soundtrack. Barry, Barry Hankerson wanted to do the soundtrack, so uh, they didn't want to fuck with him, right? So uh, Barry gets Cap to go to New York, you understand me, and and, and, and the holler, and, ba and ba uh, uh, Russell don't want to talk to Barry at all. Like, fuck Barry, uh, fuck, fuck Shahid Muhammad. I mean, we, ain't, we ain't trying to hear shit he say, so we go, uh, Hustle, one of our artists, he, he gets in contact with Kenny Lee, Russell's man. I am saying, get Russell's man. And so they call and uh, they, they say, Russell's in the bed and they hand him the phone. And, and it's Shahid on the phone and he got to an answer. Damn. <laughs> so so uh, Shahid, he talks to, uh, talks to Barry. And so, um, uh, okay. Uh, What's his name? You talking about Russell Simmons? Yeah, Russell Simmons. So Barry gets with um, Leor Corn. Yeah, Leor. Yeah. He gets with Leor and he says, uh, like, man, we need this movie and we need to do this and we need to do that. And so Shahid and, and Big Loda, they in in uh, Leor's office, right? And you're like, no, you can't. I can't have this and then I'm not going to deal with Barry. I'm not going to give a damn. Shahid looks over at the window like Peckerwood, either this or the window. And I don't give a fuck if you throw me out the window. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna give a fuck about you, Shahid. It's not gonna go down. And then Shahid like, okay, they finally got the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Leo was one that was in the middle of everything when it came down to you know Def Jam, man. Yeah. And it came down to their business. I know I had Reg Wright, and Reg Wright told me that. Uh, he went down there to try to get Snoop, and he ended up um, that Suge Knight spit in his face. And I'm like, okay, Leo, we, yeah, we got a deal. We're going to have a deal. Suge goes and tells Leo no. Spits in Leo's face. 
This in his face. He oh. spit in his face. Because of however the conversation went. He didn't Just appreciate it. He at the prison. He at the prison. At, at uh, St. Louis Obispo. Mm. Down at, the, you know, when he went down there, he yeah. didn't, he just didn't like him. He didn't like anything to do with the, uh, with the East Coast, you know, yeah. trying to sign Snoop over to the East Coast. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was big. That was a that, big deal, man. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, Leor is a hitter, but, uh, uh, my, my boy, um, uh, Tony Hustle, he can tell you about, I mean, he went from Leor from Leor sleeping on the couch with Jam Master really? Jam. You dig what I'm saying? And he came up through it, so he know him from way I, 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 T Funk. You, you, I love you. I love you. But you won't give me a job. Yeah, we on Boss Talk One One. Yeah, we gonna talk.